friends from Switzerland. Good morning. And uh, I'm not as tall as Andreas, so I better speak down and uh, deliver the speech. <laughs> so provision of a reliable and adequate water supply to Hong Kong is a universal challenge. And uh, in January this year, the World Economic Forum ranked the water prices as the number one global risk to the society. So according to the World Health Organization in 2025, Half of the world's population will be living in water stress area. So after we learn that Switzerland can enjoy 3,000 meter cube of water per annum, we're a bit jealous. <laughs> I'm glad that the Civil Exchange had organized this forum where Switzerland, the water tower of Europe, and Hong Kong could share our experience in the management of water resources. <clears throat> So Hong Kong has a small area of 1,100 kilometers square with a population of 7 million, set, uh, very similar to Switzerland. Our development area, even though we are talking about 1,100 kilometers square, our population are only living in about 25% of this land. So it's roughly about 200 to 300 kilometers square. And 40% of our area is country park or natural reserve and uh, another 20% is green area. So totally, our green, uh, greening ratio is roughly probably about 60% of the whole area. So high, very high concentration in a very tiny developed space, and while at the same time, we can maintain a very high conservation area in this small uh, territory. So we do not have any major river, <coughs> lake, or underground water resources. Although our rainfall is abundant, but it's very concentrated in the summer wet season. We have an average of about 2,400 millimeters each year, and our local yield is far from sufficient to meet the need of our population and the economic activities. Despite the inadequate natural water resources, we have been enjoying a round the clock uh, water supply in the last 30 years. In fact, we have gone a long way in securing adequate water resources in Hong Kong. Yet, we are facing the challenge in the years ahead. So, I'll share with you some of the experience. This picture was taken in Hong Kong in the 1960s when I was born. It was not an uncommon scenario in the, those days where water rationing was imposed from time to time. It was due to a rapid growth in population, uh, resulting in adequate water supply for meeting the drastic increase in water demand. Here is a chart showing the number of days in a year where the full day water supply is happening. So in the early days, full day water supply was not a norm, it's an exception. The worst drought in Hong Kong occurred in 1963. So at the uh, yellow arrow there, when the amount of water stored in our reservoir fell down to 1.7% of our total storage capacity at that time. So we can see the small picture underneath. It's totally dry. Water supply could only be maintained for four hours, not a day, four hours for every four days. So in meeting the <coughs> water crisis, our predecessors took the innovative approach by making use of the most abundant water resources in Hong Kong the seawater. So towards the end of 1950s, Hong Kong started to develop its seawater flushing system. At the beginning, seawater was supplied to two new public housing estates with separate pumping system for flushing. The seawater system continued to expand afterwards, and it now covers our urban area and some new towns serving about 80% of our population. So in 2014, our seawater consumption was roughly about uh, 270 million cubic meter. <coughs> Certainly, that saving is a <coughs> is a equivalent amount of fresh water for flushing. So we will continue to expand our seawater flushing system whenever it's cost effective to do so, and we are planning to expand to other parts of the territory as soon as we can. So at the same time, we we are also negotiating with our labor, the Guangdong province of mainland and start to import raw water from the Dongzhang in 1965. So this year will be the 50th anniversary of the supply of Dongzhang River to Hong Kong. 
So in 1965, he imported 68 million cubic meters of water. It increased now by about 10 times, to close to 720 million cubic meters in uh, 2014. So Dong Zhong River water is now account for about 70 to 80 percent of our fresh water supply in Hong Kong. And we have a ceiling. Currently, our agreement with uh, mainland China, uh, Guangdong Province is the ceiling of 820 million cubic meter per annum. And uh, indeed, you may say that's still a buffer, but indeed, it's not much. In the out of the uh, three years out of the last 15 years, we need to almost over 99 percent of that ceiling amount. So you can see the ceiling is a very realistic, not a uh, realistic ceiling for operation and maintenance of an adequate water supply to Hong Kong. So in the agreement, as mentioned earlier by, uh, by Yen Yen, the, under the agreement, we have a supply ceiling, a greater supply ceiling as part of the basin management in, uh, in the Dong Zhong. We will ha have been allocated 1,100 million. That will be the ultimate capacity that will be supplied to Hong Kong. We also construct several large impounding reservoirs for storage over the time of draft. We have two renowned, well renowned impound reservoirs built in the sea the Pover Cove and the High Island Reservoir, with a storage capacity of about uh, 230 million and 280 million, respectively. The total storage capacity of Hong Kong is about 580 million cubic meters, which is different to about six, <coughs> four to six months of uh, our consumption. Through these great works of our predecessors, I, as I said earlier, no further water rationing has been imposed in Hong Kong since 1982. So in fact, <coughs> as the Dong Zhong water supply can reach an ultimate capacity of uh, 1,100 million, we forecast that Hong Kong will have adequate water resources for at least for the next 20 years or so. But we are now not going to stop here. We do see that uh, uprising challenges to meet the water supply in Hong Kong. As I said earlier, Dong Zhong is major water resources for Hong Kong. The, wood, the river itself is also the water resources for several uh, major cities in Guangdong province, serving a population of 33 million. With the rapid economic growth in the past decades, some of the, these cities are already facing water shortage. As a responsible partner or member of the region, Hong Kong should ensure the sustainable use of water resources for Dong Zhang despite we are only using two-thirds of our agreed ultimate supply quantity now. As in other places, Hong Kong is also facing the uncertainty of climate change. According to the latest report from the observatory, the effect of the Hong Kong climate change had already emerged. And we have experienced large variability of in year-to-year -year rainfall. The observatory also made the projection that extreme rainfall events will be more frequent and severe. This means Hong Kong will face drought even more severe than the one that we faced in 1963. So to cope with the change <coughs> and the challenges, we promulgated total water management strategies, or in short, the TWM strategies in 2008. The principle of strategies can be summarized in four Chinese characters. Xin jie hao zhang. So we, uh, it means we will first, but emphasize on containing the growth of water demand through conservation. We will also strengthen our water supply management by developing alternative water resources. It was a change from our water policy in the past when we only endeavor to increase the water supply to meet the demand. Hong Kong has been, in, has been <coughs> enjoying a reliable water supply in the last 30 years and, and the water price is low by both international standard and the living standard in Hong Kong, much lower than two francs in, uh, per cubic meter in, uh, in Switzerland. Hong Kong people therefore have need to concern about the water conservation in the past. As we agree, it will be more difficult to change the behavior of an adult than a child. So our colleague in uh, WSD, Water Supply Department, they focus the effort by first targeting the young generation in schools. So we have launched several school programs 
including the campaign Water Conservation Starts From Home, appointing the Water Conservation Ambassadors and conducting school water audit by the students for their schools. We also published a teaching piece, Water, Learn and Conserve, and established a Water Resources Education Centre for school workers. After several years of promotion of water conservation in school, we are now extending the promotion of the program to the wider community. We launched uh, last year, Let's Save 10 Liter Water campaign recently. We encourage the public to participate in the campaign by signing online their commitment to use or to save 10 liter of water consumption per each day. More than three, uh, 300,000 citizens signed in. We are also promoting the use of water saving devices through this campaign. So our challenges are having many others uh, creative ideas, uh, ideas for conservation, and a lot of them are in the pipeline. So I would like to share with you about this. So Hong Kong has a very hilly terrain, and many of us are living at very high altitudes. So in order to provide water supply to those high grounds, the pressure in our water network in the lower areas can be as high as 10 bar. So it's 100 meters of water, water head. We also have complex distribution network in the urban area with the water main laid among very congested utilities under the road. Our water main are therefore subject to disturbance and heavy traffic loads, coupled with the aging problem in, our, in the water mains. The leakage rate in our district network had reached as high as 25% in the year 2000. <coughs> we have therefore embarked on a very massive uh, <coughs> scale replacement and rehabilitation program for 3,000 kilometers of aged water mains. By the end of 2015, the program will be completed and we anticipate that it will bring the leakage way down to 15%. We are now revisiting our network management strategies and we are planning to develop a smart network management strategy called it Water Intelligent Network or in short, WIN. It is a decision tool based on the continuous collection of information from the network including the flow and pressure by analyzing the information the part of the system in poor condition can be identified and prioritized for action including pressure management proactive leakage detection speedy and quality repair or even rehabilitation or replacement for further reduction of our water resources on the strengthening of water supply management we are deploying alternative water resources that are unaffected by the climate change. They are reclaimed waters, and uh, that is recycled water from treated effluent, and also the desalinated water, seawater. So in, health, in view of the health concern, the reclaimed water will be used for non-portable purpose as in other places in the world. So since Hong Kong has been using seawater for uh, toilet flushing, and there are not much irrigation and industrial uses in Hong Kong, the scope for use of reclaimed water is limited. Nevertheless, in some new inland area, because they're long distance from the sea soil, it is not cost effective to install seawater flushing system. It therefore produces the opportunity for use of reclaimed water. So, besides to meet the housing housing need, we will have we will have been a, a number of new development areas, or what called the NDAs, in the new inland area to cope with the increase in sewage discharge in these NDAs and to meet the stringent effluent requirement in the deep bay area. The sewage treatment work to be built or upgrade will be treated to a tertiary level. So production of reclaimed water from the tertiary treated effluent will therefore be at layer low at additional cost, thereby it's cost effective to use this reclaimed water for flushing purpose. We have already started the planning for supplying this reclaimed water to the northeastern part of the uh, new territories in Hong Kong. We are also working on a plan to promote the wider use of grey water recycling <coughs> and reclaimed uh, rainwater harvesting in uh, some government projects. So in addition to the use of our abundant seawater resources for flushing, we also <coughs> would like to capitalize for the seawater desalination in Hong Kong. We have conducted pilot plant study 
to confirm the technical feasibility of seawater desalination using reverse osmosis in Hong Kong. We will be commencing the design this year for constructing a desalination plant with an output capacity of 50 million cubic meters per annum and with provision for future expansion to 100 million cubic meters per annum, roughly about 10% of the water consumption in Hong Kong. The higher energy consumption and hence a high cost of seawater desalination will be a major area that we need to address in the design stage. We will try to source energy recovery devices to enhance the energy efficiency of the plant. So, in the longer term, Hong Kong will be supported by six different sources of water supply, including the seawater for flushing, import water from Dongjiang, local yield from Yimpanic Reservoir, and also desalinated seawater, reclaimed water, recycled grey water, and harvesting uh, rainwater in individuals' premises. Our TWM strategies was publicated in 20. 2008. <coughs> 2008, and many measures under the strategies have been implemented since then. Despite its success, we are conducting a comprehensive review of the TWM strategies for timely introduction of new initiatives to strengthen our resilience and preparedness to uncertainties and challenges in view of the challenging circumstances and the climate change. And Hong Kong is a place where East is West. But no matter in the Eastern or Western world, water has been taken as an important resource. Some 2,500 uh, 2, years ago, in Chinese literature, Wen Ji, it has the following quote about water. Gu sui zhe ho ya, gou man ma zi bun, ju sheng zi zhong ya, which I translate in simple terms is, what is water, origin of everything ancestors of all organisms. And in the Western world, there was a very similar quote from Da Vinci about water. Water is the driver of nature. So in view of its importance, we should manage our water resources with wisdom to ensure its sustainable use. So thank you. That's our global view about the Hong Kong water conservation policy. Thank you.